Hello, in this video we have got a 2005 Mark III Panda 4x4 climbing. We're going to attempt to change the clutch slave cylinder as, as with a lot of other pandas this one's developed an intermittent fault where the clutch pedal will uh, decide to stick to the floor whilst driving often returning under its own accord as of when it feels or when you put your foot under the clutch and pedal and pull it back up. Obviously doesn't make for very pleasant driving. It's also resulting in a squeak from the, uh, the clutch pedal as well occasionally. I would demonstrate that now, but typically it's not doing it because the car's sat for a while, so it's a very intermittent fault. But we've gone to Euro Car Parts pop the number plate into their website and they've managed to supply one on one of their sort of 60% off weekends as usual and it came to a mere price of £26 I think it was all in so we will start by removing the battery and the battery tray and as you can see the, uh, the slave cylinder sits on top of the gearbox down there We start first by removing the battery terminals and then we've got the battery clamp terminals on my Panda are 10 mil on each terminal it may vary being fit they normally fit whatever they can find in the factory at the time and it's a 13 mil on the clamp and it's always worth giving it a bit of a, a lubrication beforehand if it's not been off in a while just to prevent it from shearing and causing issues further down the line as with all battery removals always remove the earthing post first uh, so that if you catch the car's bodywork you're not actually shorting it whereas you would be with the earth still connected if you're doing the live terminal first now that the battery's out it's just a case of removing the battery tray base which should just lift out he says There is a drainage point where that hole there is, which has got a tube uh, to release any sort of rainwater that gets caught whilst driving. And once the base is out, you've got the main tray, you'll need to disconnect the ECU which is quite simple. There's a small lug there that you push in. And then as you pull the arm round, the terminal comes away. You've got the upper and the lower plug to disconnect. Just uh, obviously try and make sure you don't use too much brute force and cause damage. You've also got an earthing point uh, connected to the plug, which you'll need to undo uh, otherwise when you go to take the tray off it's all going to come with it the ECU stays on the actual battery tray whilst you do it this I believe is a 10 mil nut and you've then got a further two nuts here that you undo and the tray lifts out and as you can see we've now got the two retaining nuts out and I've undone the earthing cable as well which will just float about with the plugs once everything's come out. You'll also notice there is a cable tray which takes part of the vehicle's wiring loom underneath. This is just clipped in with these three lugs here. And these quite simply push through like so and just need to be pushed through before the main battery tray will come out of the engine bay. Like that. You can see we've now pushed the lugs through. 
There are a number of other things that you need to do before pulling the tray out completely, checking to see if there's any additional wiring loom clips holding things in place. Uh, my particular vehicle's got a few uh, accessories such as uh, sequential LPG fueling system fitted, so we've got a few additional wiring looms held in place that just need undoing before the tray should pull out. Right, so everything's been undone. There's a further wiring loom mount around there, one round the back, they're the two main ones on the pounder. And as I say, if you've got any additional accessories, there may be additional ones. So to recap, we've pushed the under battery tray lugs through, undone the two 13 mil. There was actually an additional 13 mil down here, which you'll need an extension bar to get to. And as you can see, everything should, with relative ease, then pull out. It does appear actually there is an additional uh, wiring room connection on the bottom corner of the ECU here that will just need to uh, to be undone. So we'll quickly do that. So as you can see, we've now undone that as well. Just be careful because there is a washer on that. And then the battery tray just lifts away from the vehicle like so far better access to the clutch slave cylinder with this part of the wiring loom easily movable to gain access and you'll notice with the slave here we've got the main feed coming out goes down to a coil bit of pipe down there and that then comes round up here and goes into a coupling block that you can see just there. Now when you change these, uh, you've potentially got two options uh, as to the exact method of disconnection and reconnection of the old and new slaves. Some you purchase, like this one, will have a complete new piping assembly. They do come with a quick connect slash release connector which in all their wisdom, sometimes come apart easily, sometimes don't. So if you go down that route, you'll need to come under the car. And you can see here where we've got the quick connect connection. Now the fear is obviously if it doesn't come apart properly, it could potentially immobilize your vehicle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the slave only not the pipe as well using the old pipe which means you may potentially have to do a little bit more bleeding of the clutch fluid once changed but it does mean that you shouldn't have too much of an issue so for me to be able to change this just at the slave without the whole pipe i'm going to need to remove the pipe from the new slave cylinder as i say some don't come supplied with the pipe we we'll normally have a blank in them now to do that, there is a third lip that we can see in here that will just need pushing out and that allows the pipe to come out quite easily. I'll show you this now. It's normally a lot easier when you've got two hands. The only thing you need to be careful of is making sure that this third lip doesn't go flying because if you lose it, you're a little bit stuck. So if we leave that lent up against there, as you can see here, simple case of pushing it out so that it comes out the other side like so. And this you can remove completely like that. And the pipe very simply pulls apart like so. Same will need to be repeated on the old unit. You'll notice the new unit has already got some clutch fluid in it. Once we've fitted the new one, we'll use the bleed nipple on the top to bleed it out. Obviously, when you do the lower one, you will lose some fluid, so it's always worth having something on the floor just to catch that. See why the unit's failed. The, uh, the corrosion buildup on that means that basically that's all been sucked into the main piston system and causing it to uh, stick in various different places 
So you'll notice that we've got the replacement slave in place on the original piping here. Pushed in, circle it back in place, to hold it in place. So it's now a case of starting the reversal of the removal. And the next point will be to bolt the new slave into place. Once that's done, the only additional step which obviously wasn't involved in taking off is you can see down here we've got a retaining sort of clip system on the main pivot arm that will then need to cut this is spring loaded so as soon as that's cut that will push its way into the clutch arm obviously if we do that before bolting this in it's going to be extremely difficult so we're going to be working against this pressure to line the bolts up so we'll uh, we'll get these in first and then we'll uh, look to get those cut accordingly so we've now got our bleed system in place so we've got a bottle under the car here just to collect everything that comes out and it's now a simple case of releasing the bleed screw and that should start to bleed So I'm not taking it all the way out, still leaving it in place. Obviously topping up the reservoir, what you don't want to do is have this go so low that it then introduces air into the system again. And it will be a case of gradually pumping the clutch. You can see here where the fluid is now starting to flow under its own accord. But the pumping of the clutch will just help the process somewhat. So pumping of the clutch can either be done by foot or by hand and it will go straight to the floor. There's going to be no resistance whatsoever as one's doing this. And it's a case of regularly then going around and checking that fluid level and topping it up as of when required. As you see, it's dropped slightly. And we have now got fluid coming through the pipe and draining into the bottle below. Once complete, obviously screw back in the grub screw on the top of the slave, uh, replace the dust cover, and you're all done and good to go. Uh, you can see the state of the old fluid that's come out of my car, quite, quite horrible really. That should be relatively clear. And I've given the outside of the container a bit of a wipe down so I could see the maximum minimum. Uh, diaphragm here sort of reflects the level quite a lot as you can see. As you see it's now sort of nice clear colour within the reservoir there. So it's just a case of topping it up with fresh fluid. Dot 4 in the Panda's case. And keep flushing it through until it starts to run through nice clear colour. Obviously dispose of your fluid correctly and in a legal manner. Uh, local uh, tips will take those and any engine oil, any contaminants like that so you don't need to flush them down the drain or anything like that and they'll take that free of charge. And obviously the job now is just to put everything back together which is all essentially reversal of the job of taking it apart. Obviously starting with the, the battery tray, the three bolts putting the ECU wiring back together, remembering your earth points here that have come off the tray and ECU, and then putting the battery in. Nearly all back together, uh, just a case of obviously uh, putting everything back together as it's all come undone. Reminds me, I've still got a bit of wiring loom down here to pull through and connect. Uh, when reconnecting the ECU, obviously remember the earthing points, one on the bottom there and the one here and to reconnect the ECU plugs. Make sure these clips are at a 90 degree angle because they may have pushed in like that and you're not gonna get them on. As this is designed for these lugs here to go onto these and it sort of pulls it all together. So if you got them at 90 degrees, push the plug into place like so. And then if you pull that, it actually pulls the plug onto the ECU and that should clip into place like so.
and that holds it all in, make sure it's all watertight and secure and makes a good all round connection. Then obviously when reconnecting the battery, remember to connect the live first so that if you hit any of the bodywork, you're not gonna be uh, shorting anything because the earth won't at that point be connected. Then obviously do the earth or the, the negative terminal last. And if you do catch any body work, you're not going to cause any arcing and short circuits. Luckily on the Panda, it's unlikely because you've got all of this in the way. But on other vehicles, it's always worth remembering it. So just to finish off, everything's back together. Taking the Panda out for drive. And I can honestly say it is almost like driving a completely new car. Really smooth clutch change. Uh, no squeaking, no signs of any pedal sticking or anything like that. So uh, certainly if you do have issues uh, with your clutch sticking or squeaking, it's a relatively easy fix. Cheap fix as well and certainly worthwhile doing.